Hi, I'm Pastor Colin Brooks, and I'm here to welcome you to the online content for Living Water Bible Fellowship. On behalf of Living Water, it is our prayer that our videos here would challenge you, encourage you, and edify you through the preaching and teaching of God's Word. However, it is our intention that our online content be used for supplementary purposes only. Our online content is not here to replace regular worship with God's people. We would exhort you, if you are not already, to find a local church in your area that is biblical, Christ-adoring, and gospel-centered, and become a member of that body. We, as a staff here at Living Water, just would like to thank you for viewing our videos. We hope you enjoy. God bless. John kind of set me up there a little bit, didn't he? Hey, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Greg Burvick. And I'm one of four pastors that we have on staff here at Living Water. And really, the reason I'm up here this morning is just what John shared with you. The other three guys are gone, right? So, hey, Greg, you're up. Uh, Bo and Colin are at a conference they just love to go to every year. So they're in Atlanta doing that. And uh, Jerron is in the Northwest with Elizabeth and the kids. Uh, Elizabeth's father passed away uh, this last week. So they're up there for, uh, for funeral services. And uh, Jerron came into my office and said, hey, Greg. I think you're preaching this week. And I went, oh, okay. So, and, and we've been, uh, we've been here at the church, we've been doing a, a men's study called The Measure of a Man, which has really been well attended. And uh, it really talks about biblical manhood and, you know, how the way the Bible defines what real manhood is and the way that the world defines it is completely different. And it's been a great study. We've had a lot of guys come into it. And John said, you know, I think you just ought to preach on that. That's great. That's good stuff. And I said, okay, let's do it. So, you know, I started, uh, uh oh, you know what, I got to do one real quick. So, last service, by the way, as you can tell, I'm a wanderer, and um, so this is my barricade. I cannot go past this stand, okay? And the reason for that is she kept saying, hey, you're walking off the stage, and I can't see you in the camera anymore, right, Colleen? So, so I'm not going to try and wander as much anyway. So, <laughs> Jerron was in my office, and, and we talked about that, and, and the more I worked on it, and... Uh, <clears throat> The more I, I kept trying to put that thing together, I really felt like the Lord was moving me in a different direction. And I kind of resisted at first. I said, no, nope, this is where God wants me to go. So this is what we're going to do. So instead of talking about biblical manhood, which maybe some of you thought I was going to be talking about this morning, we're going to be talking about perfect peace. And, uh, you know, it's amazing as Christians how important our peace is and our joy is. In fact, the Bible says as believers in Christ, we have a peace that's available to us that goes beyond what the human mind can even comprehend or understand. Our finite minds cannot even grasp it. It is so amazing. It is so wonderful. It is so deep. It is so great. And, and joy is a huge, huge part of that. And so I think as we look at this this morning, it's going to be really practical in our, in, in our own lives. Um, you know, when I, when I evaluate my own joy sometimes, I'm like, ugh. You know, my, my, my wife has a nickname for me. My nickname is Mr. Cranky Pants. And, um, you know, I have to admit, sometimes I live up to it pretty well. Uh, and usually it's at the end of the day, right? I, I will say that. But there have even been times when I first get out of bed, I'm pretty good Mr. Cranky Pants. And uh, she'll remind me of it around the breakfast table. And my wife constantly, constantly is in the scriptures on the power of God and on the sovereignty of God and on the joy of God. And man, she is not afraid to whip them out on me at breakfast, okay? And so later on today, we're going to be around the perfect breakfast table. And we'll be looking at one of Cindy's verses on the joy of the Lord and how important that is to every one of us as far as the strength that we possess as Christians. But, you know, really, is anyone here this morning where maybe you feel like you're lacking a little bit in your joy? You wish you had a little bit more peace. you got some things going on in your life that are very difficult. We have circumstances in our life that can be really, really hard. Dennis O'Dowd was here first service. He was sitting right there, and I could hardly look at the guy. He's being diagnosed with cancer. He is hurting. He's going through treatment. He's, just, he's suffering right now. And yet I know many of you out there have fought sicknesses and illnesses and, 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 and have gone through things like cancer, and you've dealt with death. And, and, and even the church itself, you know, can cause a little angst and worry in our lives. It can be difficult at times. But I'm here to tell you as Christians, as believers in Jesus Christ, there is a peace that goes well beyond our human understanding. 
that brings us through those circumstances. There is a joy there. See, the thing is with Christ in God's way, you know, it's not the absence of the problem that's going to bring you joy. It's the presence of Christ in the situation, in those circumstances, that's going to bring you the joy. Because some of those problems, they could go away. They might not go away. I don't know. It's hard to say. But I do know that the presence of Christ in that situation is what brings the peace. And that's what brings the joy. The problem doesn't always go away. But as Christians, right, we have something very special that the Lord offers to us that can give us that peace. Has anybody read Voice of the Martyr magazine? That magazine is, it, it, it just, ugh, it gets me every time I read it. Uh, we get a subscription here at the church, so I, I, you know, I read it every month. And, and you know, I'm, I'm reading about these people where, you know, their children are taken away from them. Uh, their, their, their father and their mother are, are, are murdered right in front of them. Every day, they don't even know if they're going to live to see the next day. Why? Because they're Christians. I just read about a guy today that slept for six years on the top of a roof because his family kicked him out of the house because he started confessing, professing Christ. But yet, when they ask those people in those magazines, how are you doing? God is good. God is so good. He saved me. I know where I'm going. I want all my lost brothers to know. It just overwhelms me. I go, wow, that's, the, that's a piece that goes beyond human understanding. In those circumstances, how can you be that way? It's only by the power of Christ. And so some of the circumstances we face in our lives, and boy, I know, guys, they can be difficult. They can be hard. There can be unbelievable peace in those circumstances. And there can be great joy in the Lord uh, through those circumstances. So what I would like to do this morning is kind of what I call get back to the basics <clears throat> and look at a scripture that is actually probably common to a lot of us. A lot of us know about the scripture in uh, Philippians because it talks about being anxious in particular. Okay, so people go to it all the time. So I'll tell you what. Why don't we do that this morning? Let's turn to Philippians chapter 4 <clears throat> and take a look at uh, what Paul was teaching us here about worry and about being fearsome and about being anxious and about this peace that's available to us that goes beyond what a human mind can understand, okay, about unbelievable joy. So we're going to start out with Philippians 4, and we're going to read verse, verses 4 through 7, okay? And then we're going to come back, and we're going to start picking at this thing a little bit. So let's start out with verse 4. <clears throat> rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That is an unbelievable passage of Scripture, and I know a lot of us know it, especially on the, on the worry and the anxious part. i got to tell you, there are times... I probably haven't used this passage very good, even as I'm trying to help others. You know, even in the short time I've been here at Living Water, you know, some people will maybe come into my office, they're a little stressed out, they're a little anxious, a little fearsome, and I'll say, hey, man, look, look what it says in Philippians. I got the answer for you. It says right here, don't worry. Have a good day. See you later, you know? <laughs> and literally, I'm like, wait a second, you know? I mean, for me, especially for guys, I think we, we think that way. Well, it's simple, man. Don't worry. It's fixed, okay? No. Folks, dealing with worry and dealing with fear and, 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 and dealing with things that makes us anxious is not going to be an act of your will or my will. It's going to be the power of God working in our lives that's going to allow us to deal with being anxious and being fearful and not having peace in our lives. We, can't, we, can't, we cannot make ourselves do that. I've tried it and it worked very good. And unfortunately, I've, I've told some folks, hey, you know what? You shouldn't be worrying. It says here, don't worry. You know, it goes a little deeper than that. We're going to find out as we start picking these apart, you know, some good things to look at that we can apply in our own lives that are going to help us to experience that peace and joy that I'm talking about. So let's start breaking it down. Let's look at the very first verse, verse 4. All right? Brothers and sisters, it begins with joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. 
Other translations say, let your joy in the Lord be full. Again, I say, rejoice in the Lord always. There's some great words that we're going to be looking at in this passage. Words like always and everyone and anything and nothing and everything. First one here is always. When do we rejoice in the Lord? Always. It's right there for us. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Your joy, once again, is an unbelievable power source for you as a Christian. Do not let anyone steal it and take it away from you through anxious, being anxious and worrying. It starts with joy. We are to rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. That worship set was awesome. Praise the Lord. You can do it in your car. You can do it walking down the street. You can do it. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in your Redeemer. Rejoice in the Lord. And do it always. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. In fact, right now, let me share with you a scripture. Now, there's a ton of scriptures in the Bible that talks about the joy of the Lord being our strength. I mean, just book after book after book addresses that issue, story after story. And I, I don't know where my wife finds all these things. She's got them all down. It's unbelievable. You know what I mean? But I'm going to take you to one that's, wow, it's one of her favorites and my favorites. that She was just reading to me the other day. And, uh, you know, when she starts challenging me on that joy, what I love is she gets out God's word. She doesn't whip out her opinion. She says, well, let me read this to you, Mr. Cranky Pants. So let the, let the champion of Cranky Pants take you around the breakfast table here, and let's turn to the book of Nehemiah. Now, you know, guys, whenever the other guys are preaching, and they do the Old Testament thing, and they bounce back there, usually the last Bible shuffling is always mine, right? I, I can never find it. I'm like, oh, where's that at? You know what I mean? So I apologize for moving his back there, but it's not that hard. Nehemiah is a great book, and the way I always break it down is there's like all the books before Psalms and Proverbs and all the books after, right? And you can find them a little easier. Greg's method. But anyway, Nehemiah, let's see if I can find it after saying all that. See, I knew I was going to do this. Here we go. Here we go. All right, Nehemiah chapter 8. And we're going to be looking at verses 10 through 12. This is a great story on the joy of the Lord being our strength, on rejoicing in the Lord always, okay? Uh, this is during the time when the Jewish people are coming out of captive, captivity from Babylon, and they're coming back to Jerusalem. This is about, about the third wave of Jewish people, you know, is coming back at this point. Uh, Nehemiah has already rebuilt the wall, which was a huge undertaking. And they're getting ready to read the book of the law of Moses. They're getting ready to read the Holy Scriptures to the people. They haven't had that done <clears throat> in a very, very long time. So Ezra gets out the book and he starts reading it to the people. And, all, and, and, and as they're listening, there's just this a tremendous amount of weeping and sorrow and grief as they're hearing God's word and they're understanding and it's becoming clear to them. And, 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 and uh, Nehemiah and Ezra are watching this and then they go, we need to say something. And this is what they say here in verse 10. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat Oh, that sounds good to me. And drink sweet wine and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make great rejoicing because they had understood the words that were declared to them. The joy of our Lord is our strength. You know, they, 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 they showed up weeping. They left rejoicing. After hearing God's word, the joy of the Lord is their strength. I just love that story. All right, let's flip back over to Philippians here, chapter 4. Lots of bouncing around this morning. As we look at this scripture. And we'll, so we'll break it down into the next verse. So we've already gone over the rejoicing side of it, right? Rejoice in the Lord when? Always. Here we go, okay? Here's verse 5. I love this one. I can barely say the word. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. Who are we supposed to let that be known to? 
everyone. These words are amazing. It's to be known to everyone. What the heck is reasonableness? You know, I've asked myself that, and um, boy, it's really interesting when you look at other translations uh, and, and what comes out here, but you know what? It's also really, really consistent. So when you start breaking that down, and there's, there's a ton of great commentary written on these scriptures because they're so popular, and as I started looking at all the different commentaries and studying uh, the different stuff that was out there, they all said the same thing. The word that's used here is reasonableness. Even in our dictionary, it says it's thinking fairly and highly of others. That's part of being reasonable. You think fairly and you think highly of others. One commentator, John MacArthur, said generosity, mercy, and leniency toward others is what this word is referring to. Generosity, mercy, and leniency, leniency toward others. If you go to the New Living Translation and, and, and other uh, translations out there, it says, it doesn't even use the word reasonableness. It uses the word be unselfish and considerate. Unselfish and considerate to who? To everyone. Man, is this really important when it comes to having that peace and joy? Let's keep looking. Let's dig into this a little bit. Um, this will lead us into another verse, that, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 2, another verse that Paul wrote that is my favorite of all time. This, is, this particular scripture just jazzes me as far as how I view ministry. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Okay, we're talking about this reasonableness, this unselfish and considerate approach. It, it's like a state of selflessness is what it really is. It's, it's what it's all about. Look, look what the verses 3 and 4 say in Philippians 2. Now, in, in Philippians 2 is great, right? Because what do we have to do there, guys? We flipped over one page. That was pretty good, huh? right? That's easy. Even I can do that. So here we are. We're in Philippians 2, verse 3. Do nothing from selfish ambition. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. That's what it means to be reasonable. Do nothing. How about, there's another word for you, nothing, right? That's one of those words that kind of puts me in a brain warp. I mean, like, if you really truly have nothing, then... There's nothing, I guess. I don't know. It's a hard word for me to understand. I mean, it just, it's, it's a complete, there's just nothing there. And it says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Look to the interest of others, just not your own interests. Folks, brothers and sisters, it's not just about us. It's about the other people out there that need Jesus Christ. It's about our other brothers and sisters in Christ that are hurting. Why is this so important when it comes to joy? I'll tell you why. Why is it so important when it comes to peace? This is why. When we are so immersed in our own problems and in our own grief and we are hurting so bad, the one thing that makes a difference is when we start loving on others. We get our minds off of ourselves and we start pouring into others. When you do that, it makes a big difference in your life. You're not worried about your own problems. You're worried about somebody else's. I've seen it in myself. I've seen it in my family. I know when we start caring about others and we don't get overwhelmed by what's going on in our own lives, we have more joy. We have more peace. And you find somebody that has a lot of joy and peace, you're going to find out they're, they're somebody who is definitely not looking after their own interests all the time. They're concerned about others. This is a very, very important aspect of experiencing the peace and joy of Christ. Pour into others. It's such a healthy thing to do. All right, back over to Philippians 4. So we've talked about rejoicing in the Lord always. We've talked about you know, letting our reasonableness be known to everyone. For, for the Lord is at hand. I didn't read that. But the Lord is at hand. Then we go into verse 6. And here's the verse that, that really people really dwell on pretty hard in this passage because this is where we start getting into worry. We start getting into anxiousness. We start getting into fear. All right? We're going to break it into two parts. We'll call this 6A. Do not be anxious about anything. Do not be anxious about what? Anything. Other translations, in fact, more translations say it this way than the way I just read it to you. They say, worry about nothing. Wow, 
That's pretty powerful. And if you think we're going to do that on our own, we can't do that on our own. It's impossible. We cannot will that. But the scriptures tell us worry about nothing and uh, not be anxious about anything. And the, the thing I like about this so much is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, while he was here on this earth and walked this earth, he touched on this issue a lot. And he really understood what we were going to be going through in our lives. And that's why he talked to us about worry and about fear and about being anxious and about not letting our peace be stolen. Because the peace that Christ gives us, according to John 14, is not like the peace the world gives. It's a different kind of peace. It's a peace that comes from the Heavenly Father. It's a peace that's beyond human understanding. Jesus has unbelievable teachings on this. You know, the, the God of all creation, the God-man, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, your Redeemer, our Savior, has unbelievable teachings on this and, 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 and such wonderful um, words that, can, that, that we can apply in our lives to make a difference. <clears throat> and you know, he's talking to us. There are so many times, well, I'll run across people and they'll say, I just wish God would talk to me. I wish he'd give me some direction. I need wisdom. I need understanding. I don't know what to do. And I'm telling you, guys, right here, this is how God talks to us. Open this up, listen, and move on. He's going to talk to you through his life. That's why we have it. That's what he gave it to us for. Open it up and listen because God wants to talk to you through this book. So let's do just that. Let's see what Jesus says about being anxious. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. <clears throat> now, it wasn't that long ago we just had a great sermon series on the book of Matthew. A really good sermon series. And I think, actually, this particular passage, I think Jerron was the one who spoke on it. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> Jesus spent some time on this issue here. The God of all creation. He's talking to you, and he's talking to me this morning. It's like he's saying, hey, Greg, Greg, I got something I want to tell you this morning. Come here. Listen to me. It has to do with being anxious. I'm tired of seeing you walking around in fear and no joy. Listen to me. I got something I want to tell you. He's got something to tell you this morning, too. Let's go to 6, verse 25. We're going to go through 34. I mean, look at the heading. If you have your ESV Bibles, you're going to notice even the heading on this section of Scripture says, do not be anxious, right? It's awesome. Okay, verse 25. Now, through these, I think, 10 verses, the Lord actually uses the word anxious six different times. He's going to do some teaching here for us, okay? Let's see what God has to say. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious, there's one, about your life, what you eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food in the body, more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, which is number two, can add a single hour to his span of life? None of us. Going on in 28. And why are you anxious, there's number three, about clothing. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, therefore do not be anxious. There's four, saying... What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious, number five, about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious, number six, for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Wow. Yeah. Is that true or what? There is some unbelievable teaching there. Six different times he brings it up. He gives us this direct command. But you know what I love about it? In this scripture, 
Jesus does the same thing that Paul's doing to us in Philippians 4. He just doesn't say, don't be anxious. It's pretty simple, man. Just quit being anxious. No, no, no. He gives us a directive. He gives us a command to follow that allows us to experience this peace that I'm talking about and this joy that we so desperately need. Look at verse 33. Stuck right in that passage. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Every time I read that, I have to check the Greg Burbig priority list. You know, where, what's your priority this morning? Where does God fit into that little list you've got up there? Because he needs to be in the number one spot. He's going to take care of you. The Lord's going to give you unbelievable peace. He's going to meet your every need. But we need to seek God and his kingdom and his righteousness first. That needs to be first. It's an important, important part of dealing with fear and anxiousness in your life. If you've got a lot of fear going on and if you're anxious and you're worried and you're concerned and you're not experiencing that peace, turn to God and seek him. And this is a daily process. This is Jesus. This is God talking to us here telling us that is what we need to do. Just like in Philippians where Paul has given us directives on how to handle this, right? So let's flip back over to Philippians and continue on since we've dealt with the issue of being anxious and being worrisome. We'll get uh, to the, the second half of verse 6. We'll call this 6B. So first we read, do not be anxious about anything, worry about nothing, and then, but in everything, there's another one of those words, right? I mean, we're talking everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Oh, man, how many times have we heard this, how true it is? Prayer, prayer, prayer. And prayer with a spirit of thanksgiving. I, you know, I tell you, I, I, one thing that's really exciting me about Living Water right now is I'm really feeling that this body is understanding more and more the importance of prayer. And if God is going to do what he wants to do within this body, prayer is going to be a very important part of allowing that to happen. We need to constantly be coming before our Lord in prayer, and we need to do it with a spirit of thanksgiving. Dr. J. Vernon McGee, one of my favorite commentators. I can't do his southern accent very well. But, uh, you know, he says that uh, when we pray, you should be thanking the Lord before you even ask him. Right? That was pretty bad, but that's a good try. <laughs> we need to be thankful in our prayer. Thank God for his answers before you even bring forth the request. God knows what he's doing. He's sovereign. He's in control, but he wants us in prayer. And he wants us in prayer about absolutely everything. There have been some folks in this church in the last year, year and a half that have really, really touched my life and have pushed me and chafed me on the issue of prayer. And it's been such a blessing. Because you know what? It seems like every day there's never a convenient time to pray, right? Oh, you got to make time, folks. You got to come to the Lord. You got to come to the God of creation because... It has a lot to do with the peace and the joy that he wants to bring into your life. Prayer is critical. It is critical. Um, another verse that emphasizes this, we'll flip it here real quick, is Colossians 4.2. There are so many verses in the Bible that tell us to be constant and continual in our prayer. And I picked this one because it's only two pages away. So here we go. Colossians 4.2. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. We need to bring a spirit of thanksgiving into our prayer time constantly. I really challenge you to do that. So as we're looking for that peace that goes beyond human understanding and that joy that we so desperately need in our lives, <coughs> and as we want to <coughs> get rid of all fear, and not be anxious, not be all tied up in knots and worrisome. We need to go right back to Philippians 4, so let's do that and remember and look at, again, what Paul is showing us here. Because when we get to verse 7, as we do all those things, as we rejoice in the Lord always, as we let our reasonableness, as we put others first, known to everyone, and um, as we 
do no longer get worrisome or anxious, but we seek God and his kingdom first, right? And his righteousness. As we do all those things, there's a result that comes about. It's verse 7. Here's the result. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Oh, wow, do we need our hearts and minds protected in this day we're living in. That is the ultimate protection program right there. You just heard it. I, I mean, that's like the original life lock. Right there. That's it. I mean, if you want protection in your life, you need your heart and you need your mind protected in the Lord Jesus Christ. You need that peace that goes beyond understanding. And you need to, therefore, Live in such a way where you are always rejoicing in the Lord. We can go back and just keep reviewing this stuff over and over again, right? Where your reasonableness is known to everyone. Work on that, people. It's important. It's an important part of who we are as a church. You see, the experiences we go through can be very difficult, but the world is watching. You have other brothers and sisters in the Lord that are weaker in the faith, I guarantee you, that are watching some of the unbelievable, just difficult stuff you guys are going through. And you know what? When they see the peace of Christ in your life amongst that difficult situation, almost every time they're going to say, I want that. That's what I want. That's what I need. It's a testimony, folks. It is a testimony. That's what I need. How do they, how do they have that peace? I don't get it. You know, they just lost this person. They, they just died. Or, or this just took place. Or this just happened. I can go on and on and on. It's because of the presence of Christ in the situation and that peace that surpasses all, all human understanding. If we go a little bit farther in Philippians 4, I call this verses 8 and 9, I call these two verses Paul's verse 33 in Matthew. He gives us more Direction. He, he's given us a great roadmap here already on commands and things we need to do in dealing with the, the, the peace that goes beyond human understanding. But look at what, he's, what, he's, what he's, he's summarizing, he's finalizing here with these last couple of verses when he's talking about this particular subject. Look at verse 8. Did I give you this verse, Colleen? Ah, yes, there it is. Amen. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And the God of peace will be with you. You, you, you wondering what to put your mind on? You, you know where do you want to, where do I put my energy? Where, where, what do I focus on? There's a pretty good list right there. As we obtain to this peace that literally guards our hearts and our minds. Guys, it, it's just it's such an amazing thing that is a, that's there for us as believers in Jesus Christ. Don't let any circumstance or situation steal the joy you have in the Lord. God is in control. Follow his teaching in the word and live within that peace that truly goes beyond human understanding. Rejoice. I'll say it again in the Lord always. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. Do not be anxious about anything. Worry about nothing. Pray about everything with thanksgiving and experience that peace. Now, I, there, and there might be a lot of my brothers and sisters in the Lord who are this morning who believe in Jesus, and you're not experiencing that. Man, I just pray when you leave here, you will begin to experience that joy and that peace. And there may be some of you here this morning that don't even know Jesus Christ. Guess what? It's kind of a tough deal because this peace and this joy is available to those who are washed by the blood of the Lamb. This peace and this joy is for those who have trusted in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's who this peace is for. That's good news for you. If you don't know Jesus and you're here this morning, I want you to know you can have 
that peace, and you can have that joy because it's at the foot of the cross. Because you see, Romans 5 tells us we got a problem. Since the time of Adam, we've got a big problem. That problem is sin. Since the fall of Adam, man is in a state of sin. We are separated from God. We are without hope at all. We're in deep trouble because of sin. But Romans 10 tells us that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and if we believe in our heart that God has risen him from the dead, you will be saved. For those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. You cannot obtain this peace or obtain heaven through your works. You're going you're to kill yourself off trying. It's too much work. The only way is through trusting in Jesus Christ. If you want that peace and you want that joy this morning, you're going to find it in one man and one man only. That's Jesus. Because the only cure for sin, the only thing that's going to solve that problem is God's great plan of salvation, and that's Christ himself. It's through faith in Jesus Christ. How could we possibly be talking about peace and joy and not share the gospel truth of what it means to have Christ as your Lord and Savior? So if you're here this morning and you're just dying for that peace, you're longing for it, you're, you're, you're tied up in knots, you're miserable, and you want your life to change, then I'm going to invite you to get out of your chair. I want you to come up here this morning. I want you to come up here, and I'll pray with you. I will show you a better way through the scriptures. We'll have, we have deacons and elders ready to pray with you. And I know it takes courage. I know it's hard to come out of that seat. And you know what? As much courage as it takes to get out of a chair and walk to the front of a church, it's not that courage that's going to save you. There's nothing you're going to do, even getting out of that seat. That act is not going to save you. It's totally by grace. It's totally Jesus Christ and his love for you that allows that. So I invite you this morning, if you want to enter into a life that's completely different than the one you're in now, and if you want this peace and you want this joy, I invite you to come forward and we will pray with you this morning. You'll also notice in the seats in front of you, we have cards where you can say, yes, I've made a decision for Christ. Fill that out. Get it to somebody. We have a table here in the back. There's always an elder there after the service. He'd love to pray and talk to you. And, and, and fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, when we talk about an issue like this, it can really tug. But there's so much hope in it. And, 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 and this could be a time of recommitment for you. This could be a time where you say, hey, I want something different. I've trusted in Jesus, but I'm not living the way Christ wants me to live. I need to recommit my life to the Lord. I've been there. Show up on one Sunday, maybe once every four days. Well, four, uh, four days would be pretty good. Once every four months. Uh, once every four Sundays. There we go. Once a month. That's good. I'm, I'm glad I was there. I'm glad you're here. But it goes beyond that. It's about a walk with Jesus Christ. Once you trust in him, there's this peace and there's this joy that he wants you to experience and live in. And you need to commit your life in a way where that can take place. So I invite you this morning. Come out of your chairs. Come up here. I want to pray with you. The deacons want to pray with you. The elders want to pray with you. God has a lot of work for this church to do. This is a very, very unique group of folks. And uh, when Jerron calls at the church of goofballs, I think he's got a pretty good thing going there, right? Amen. We're all so unique and special, but we all need that peace. We all need that joy as we carry on the work he's called us to. So I would encourage you to recommit, to completely and totally say, Lord, I want to do it different now. I want to get involved. I want to be more involved in the working of the church. I want to grow more as a disciple. There's so many good things going on where that can take place. So I want to challenge you in that as well, and I want to ask you, uh, you know, now after the service, come forward and talk to me. Come forward and talk to me. We'd love to, to, to pray about that. The peace of God is 
such an amazing thing. There, 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 there's not a word to explain it. It's like the closest thing would be to say it, it's an experience, right? We can't explain it because it goes beyond our human understanding. Now, the world's peace, no problem. The world's peace is definable. In fact, it's defined by man. Man's mind has defined the world's peace, and I can tell you what, it's fluff. It's fluff. There's zero substance. It will fail. It will crush. It will fall in. It will not satisfy. But the peace of Christ that goes beyond human understanding, that's a whole different story. Amen? All right, let's stand up and ask for the Lord's blessing upon us as we leave this building this morning. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah, we thank you for the blood of Christ. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the peace that, God, you give your saints that goes well beyond anything we can possibly understand. Joy that is overwhelming, no matter what the circumstances are that we're going through, the joy and the peace can still be there because of our faith in you, Lord, because of our trusting in you. So, Father, I pray as we leave this place today, the world out there would see a group of people that has the peace of Christ in their life. And the world would look at us and say, wow, I want some of that. That's what I need. That would really, really be helpful right now. I pray our testimony would be strong. I pray, oh God, that your hand of blessing and protection would be upon us and that throughout this week, we would bring glory to you in everything we do. For in Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you again for viewing our online content at Living Water Bible Fellowship. If you were encouraged or edified by anything you heard, I would encourage you to go ahead and click the subscribe button. And by doing that, you will be receiving regularly the sermons that we put online. And we would also like to invite you, if, if you do not have a relationship with Christ Jesus, a saving relationship through the gospel where your sins have been forgiven, please feel free to contact us. You can go to our website at www.livingwateralamosa.org and you can either email one of the pastors there or give us a call and we would love to talk to you about Jesus Christ and the gospel that saves sinners. Thanks for watching.